Ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. We'll have a positive cattle facts market outlook for 2014. Plus, the importance of maximizing forage value for your cows. And more tips from Kurt Pate on low stress livestock handling. And now, NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen with host Kevin Oxner. Hello and welcome to NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. I'm Kevin Ochsner. Thanks for joining us. One of the highlights of the recent cattle industry convention and NCBA trade show was the Cattle Facts Outlook Seminar. Thousands of cattlemen and women were on hand as members of the Cattle Facts team shared their analysis and insights regarding how current events will influence the 2014 markets. And now, here's Cattle Facts Senior Analyst Kevin Good with a recap of this informative session. Art Douglas talked about the weather and basically he was very optimistic that uh, the majority of the U.S. would enjoy improved moisture conditions as we go through 2014, so that was uplifting. Then we went on and talked about uh, trade issues, Brett Stewart covered that, and basically talked about some of the challenges we have you know, from an export standpoint with record high prices, that's probably going to limit some of our exports next year. At the same time, uh, the greater China area is such a huge part of the global beef demand picture today that imports into the United States are probably going to be limited as well because a lot of the Australian product is going to go to the greater China area versus the United States. And then we shifted gears and talked about feed grains. And from a feed grain standpoint, uh, optimistic with arts forecast from a weather standpoint that we'll have a very adequate corn crop again in 2014. They'll build those stocks uh, as we go into the latter part of this year. So we think that grain values will probably decline slightly as we go through 2014. We put a range around that of 350 to 450 a bushel for the year with the softer prices with new crop corn later in the year. And so after that, we went ahead and talked about the supply side of the market. Supply side, very bullish. Uh, as we think about it, we're in the midst of going from liquidation to expansion. And with that, we're going to take out about a million head of cows out of the harvest mix over the next two years combined. Same time, we'll take about 1.2 million head of fed steer and heifers out of the slaughter mix over the next two years too. So you boil that down to a per capita beef supply situation, it's going to be down about four and a half percent this year, which is about two and a half pounds, and will probably decline another two pounds next year in 2015. So the supply side of the market, very friendly. Then we covered demand issues, and from a demand issue, we looked at uh, you know, retail beef demand as gauged by consumption or quantity times price actually was higher in 2013. We think that could be the same in 14. You know, yeah. a consumer still has preference for beef, even at a higher value. So we're talking values, and if we're talking about retail going up about 7% in 2014, you, know, you mesh that together, and, and the outlook for prices is very, very rosy. 7% uh, increase for fed cattle at 135 for an annual average. We would have yearlings and calves up about 13 to 15%. You know, that puts yearlings up in the one, upper 160s and calf values at 190 to 195 on an annual average. So, a very optimistic outlook. So, if the experts at Cattle Facts are right, it's going to be a good year for beef producers on multiple fronts. We talked with several cattlemen and women in Nashville and asked them why they're excited to be part of the beef industry in 2014. Probably the most exciting thing I have see is a uh, all the dietitian uh, data coming down proving that uh, red, or red lean meat is actually a nutritious product. And we've got to get that out into the hands of the consumers. So they, we've been bad mouthed for so many years, um, last 10 or 15 years, and we've got a nutritious product and they've got to f find out it's part of a healthy diet. Uh, it's also, we're part of feeding the world. And so that's exciting. We have a global economy that's growing, so our opportunity for agriculture today is probably as good as it's been in several generations. Oh, I guess, you know, we're always looking at profitability. Uh, I'd like to see the uh, industry uh, continue on an upbeat, uh, you know, and I mean, we definitely need to start uh, building the cow herd and I think that's definitely happening now. 
and, but we need that. We need more livestock. Well, I hope everyone has a good season. Uh, I, I think that the row crop farmers, I want them to make money and make a living. But on the other side of it, the people that have to purchase the, uh, the, the feeds to um, you know, feed their cattle, it, it, it needs to be a compromise between both people so that everyone can actually see the future of the cattle industry and survive. Well, it's going to be profitable for everybody, and I think that's a rare occasion when every sector is going to make a little money, and it looks like that's an opportunity here that it's going to be good. And uh, after the last couple of years, we were looking for that opportunity to be good, and we're, and we're, we're looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. Well, we're really happy with the cattle prices right now. Nobody can, nobody can get past that, so that's going to be the first thing. And the fact that they seem to be holding up, so it's a home run right now. Still ahead on NCBA's Cattlemen and Cattlemen. Nutrition is essential in order to get those cows. Um, plays a huge part in fertility. So body condition scores, we know that by increasing body condition scores, we increase conception rates. We'll look at how forage value plays a role in keeping cows healthy and productive. Plus, we'll hear from Kurt Pate. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You're watching NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman on RFD TV. To truck guys, the truck is everything. And when you put them in charge of making an unbeatable truck, good things happen. This is the Ram 1500, the 2014 Motor Trend Truck of the Year and first ever back-to-back -back winner. Guts, glory, ram. Its arrival is as routine as the truck that brings the next load of calves. You stand ready, waiting, watching for symptoms. A revolutionary new weapon in hand. Unique chemistry and hard-hitting active ingredient Longer duration in the respiratory tract. Rapid absorption. Join the Zuprevolution. Zuprevo, Tilda Pearson. See your veterinarian. To ensure your seeds become strong stands, give your soil the right preparation before you plant. Improve your growing environment with agronomically designed equipment from Case IH, like the new Ecolo Tiger 875 Disc Ripper. Engineered to manage tough residues and shatter root limiting compaction for improved nutrient uptake and better stands with more fully developed plants at harvest. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? Learn more at caseih.com. Welcome back. When it comes to building a profitable cattle operation, it pays to maximize your forage resources so you can improve your herd's productivity and keep your feed expenses as low as possible. Cattleman to Cattleman reporter Brian Baxter takes us to Middle Tennessee for more on the importance of improving forage quality. For cow-calf producers, maintaining their forage base and the condition of their cows is essential to keeping their herd productive but every operation faces different challenges. For example, Bill Topper has been around agriculture most of his life, but his 800-acre farm in Middle Tennessee is a place he and his wife just bought a couple of years ago. In the past years, uh, when we drove through the place uh, with the realtor, and he drove us around on a four-wheeler, and uh, I can tell you that the weeds were so high that there were often times when, where we would drive across a field uh, with the four-wheeler, you couldn't see where you're going. And, uh, you know, you, you really had to literally, uh, pardon the pun, see through uh, the weeds to be able to envision what it could be, you know, as a uh, really good place to raise cattle. But now we're in the process uh, as a full-blown cattle operation. It's taken us about two years to get to where we are today. We're about 175 brood cows, and uh, all in all with um, heifers, uh, registered bulls that we uh, back lot and we'll sell this coming fall the first batch that were almost 400 head on the place. Also in Tennessee, Lester Hardaway has faced a different set of problems 
On his operation, a flood destroyed years of hard work in improving his pasture and forage resources. Back before the flood, we had the capability of grazing 175 mama cows. Since the flood, we had to drop back to less than 100 on the same amount of land. And when you're selling this beef, I don't care if it's a genetics or what, you, all you're selling is grass. And so the better the grass is, the better the cows do. And so with the last year, we got our hay ground back up to where it needed to be in production. And we reseeded uh, about 80 acres of grass. And that was in our first phase of the three year program, reseeding and trying to get our weed under control. The weeds is playing a, a hard part on these cattle. I mean, it, it's just taking its toll on our pastures. And with record high grain prices in the past few years, all producers have had a big incentive to minimize feed purchases by improving their grass and forage. For the producers that are um, trying to maintain weight on cows, um, you know, you have the option of trying to do it on a forage-based diet or a concentrate-based diet. You can do it most economically on a forage-based diet because one thing that I think that farmers have lacked doing is we've gotten so caught up on commodity products that we have really forgotten the fact that we have a huge resource that our cows walk around on every day. And by better utilizing those, that's all the nutrients these cows need. We've seen cows that have a body condition score of six or better, and all they're doing is eating grass. But it's the type of grass and type of forages we have out there available for them. And that's very important. Um, clean pastures, um, nutritious pastures, you know, utilizing your pastures by rotational grazing. Dr. Clark says body condition scoring, or BCS, is a valuable way to measure a cow's health and a key to enhancing productivity. Nutrition is essential in order to get those cows, um, plays a huge part in fertility. So body condition scores, we know that by increasing body condition scores, we increase conception rates. If cows are not getting bred, they're not gonna calve. So it's essential for us to make sure that we have cows at an optimal body condition score so we can get calves on the ground. In fact, unless a producer is willing to pay high feed bills, having enough grass to keep cows in good body condition is critical. And there's a high price to pay when forage and nutritional value are lacking. One thing that we do know is that in the nutrition hierarchy, the most important thing is maintaining the cow's personal self. So reproduction, lactation, all of those are secondary. To the cow, they're not a necessity. So if we have a cow that's of a low BCS score, all of her nutrients is gonna to go to herself. You know, she's gotta maintain. So that sets us back, one, in raising a calf, and two, in rebreeding. Reproduction to a cow is luxury. So only any excess is gonna to go towards helping her be reproductively sound. So it's essential that we have cows in a situation where they are nutritionally fit to take care of themselves, to raise a baby, and to rebreed. The way we look at when a, the first bite of grass the cow eats is to just maintain herself. The second bite goes to her raising what she's got on her side, which is a calf that's, that's the meal ticket for everybody, it pays the bills. The third thing goes to get her self in the condition to rebreed. And hopefully there's enough nutrients, enough grass that she can go ahead and she's a growing animal until they get about five years old. So hopefully that will let her go ahead and get the extra growth that she needs. We'll have more from Tennessee when we return. Stay with us. This is yours, and so is what grows there. Not theirs, or theirs, yours. You need this to fight this, and this to grow more this. Because the more of this, you feed them, 
the less this you spend on that, which leaves more of this here. Don't let them take this from you. Chaparral takes care of weeds and brush, and that's that. Celebrate American agriculture at the 2014 National Ag Day. It's March 25th in Washington, D.C. With 365 sunrises and 7 billion mouths to feed, this event honors the contributions of American agriculture to the world. I am optimistic about the future of agriculture. Doubling production is what we're going to have to do by 2050. I have no doubt of what we can do this. To learn more, visit agday.org. This business can take time away and become more of your family than your actual family. My days were tough. I had a lot of doctoring, a lot of pulling. Now our days on the feed yard are happy days. It's more about looking at the cattle and enjoying what we're producing versus the alternative which is pull and treat and bang our head against the wall. We have never wavered from Draxon. We've seen the benefits just keep getting better and better. Welcome back. Let's return to Tennessee and reporter Brian Baxter with more on ways to maximize forage quality for your cows. Weeds are a battle nearly all producers face when trying to improve or simply maintain their forage resources so they meet their herd's nutritional needs. Bill Topper started by identifying his biggest weed problem, which in this part of the country was buckbrush. That was a weed that we had to address first and uh, quite the and how we attacked that weed was with a product called chaparral we knew we wouldn't get it on one pass because the problem was that bad mm -hmm. but we've sprayed every inch of the of this ranch now with that product uh, to wipe out um, the buck brush and, and the second pass we've really cleared up i think at least 95 percent of uh, that particular stemmy base weed you know uh, we were in some pastures uh, this morning that you'd be hard pressed to find a weed. You can find one maybe every 100 yards or so, but we're at the point this year with a pasture like that, that we, we, may not have to, we may not have to go in and spray this year. So we get a year off from spraying and we can go concentrate on fields that uh, the weed control isn't quite as good. But the canopy of uh, pasture grass there is now so thick, so dense, that uh, you know, weeds are really getting um, starved out. Dow AgroSciences specialized field team works closely with cattle producers like Bill to identify weeds, review product options, and recommend pasture improvement programs that build forage quality over time. Prescription is the key word here. It's not going out and doing the shotgun effect where you just go out there and say, I've got weeds, you pull the trigger on whatever herbicide is the cheapest, and then you've got weeds again you know, that year, later on, or the next year. Prescribing is key because, yes, cattle, cattle prices are high, but that doesn't mean we need to be foolish with our money. Let's be wise with our money so we can put more money back in our pockets. No doubt controlling weeds and improving forage quality involves an additional cost up front. But for these producers, it is an investment that pays off. I think that they need to start by looking at what they have available to them. Um, in my opinion, that's what's going to make them money. If they have forage out there, if they have land to put cows on, they have land to grow grass on for them to eat, and that's the way they're going to be able to put more money in their pocket. When you drive by our place, you know, we want people to look at our cattle and, you know, and basically say, oh, there's some nice cattle. And when they, when they drive by our, our pastures and they look at those, they say, those are some of the nicest pastures we've ever seen. You know, it's not overgrazed. It's well taken care of. You know, we can't find a weed on the place. I mean, that's really the dream. In Middle Tennessee, I'm Brian Baxter reporting for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Dow AgroSciences full range of products can fit nearly any rangeland or pasture situation. Learn more at rangeandpasture.com. More importantly, Dow AgroSciences wants to hear your story. They launched TogetherWeGrowGrass.com, 
where you can share your favorite stories and photos from your own ranch. Be sure to visit that website or our own website at cattlemantocattlemen.org. We'll have more right after this. Yes! <laughs> Joe! Todd! How'd you do? Oh! Not bad. See what you have to gain at thelongrangelook.com. Don't miss the 2014 NCBA Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. It's your opportunity to meet with key congressional and federal agency influencers and to let them know where cattle men and women stand on critical issues that impact the cattle business and our way of life. Make plans to be in Washington, D.C. April 8th through the 10th for the 2014 NCBA Legislative Conference. Together, we can do more. Details at BeefUSA.org. No storm is too powerful for Neopurina wind and rain storm minerals, formulated with ultimate weather resistance. That means more minerals in the feeder and available to your cattle. Wind and rain storm minerals provide more consistent intake and balanced mineral nutrition to optimize herd health and breedback rates. See the difference at your local Purina dealer or visit CattleNutrition.com. Wind and rain storm minerals, another way Purina is building better cattle. Welcome back. Bulls can be very dangerous animals and care should be taken whenever handling them. Let's head to Texas where stockmanship expert Kurt Pate shares some best practices for handling bulls safely. So the main two terms with low stress livestock handling or effective stockmanship are balance point and flight zone. And those are real good terms but let's expand on them just a little bit. When we talk about flight zone, what we want to do is get the animal to move in a, in a manner that's not fleeing, but working away from our pressure. So we'll find out that space that we need to be away from the animal that determines that nice movement. It could be a quarter of a mile away, or it could be three feet away, depending on the temperament of the animal. The next thing is balance point, and where we position ourselves on that animal to make him go and do what we want. If we pay attention to how we position ourselves, and what I try to do is point my animal's nose to where I want him to go. So as I walk to this bull, I'll step around here and I'll try to draw his eye back to me or else I'll have to get up in front to where he looks at me. He should turn and look at me with both eyes here. If I can get in a position, I'll ask him to look at me by backing up. And now I should be able to come around and send him right back towards the gate. So here, now I'm putting pressure in front of the balance point, which causes him to stop or turn away. I'll widen out here, which should cause him to slow down. I'm getting farther away from the flight zone and turn towards the gate. Now I move back into the pressure zone or the flight zone. Now I move back out because I'm trying to point his nose right at my gate. Now I'll keep the pressure on just enough. And as I, as I step out wider here, I'm going to be able to push his eye right through that gate. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Now I'll ask him to come down the fence line. So I step in behind him here and I want him to stop. So I'll walk up in front of the, the balance point and stop him. I'm going to ask him to wait there. I'll shut my gate. So I'm real careful about how I go about this. Good. So as I walk up here, I can ask him to look at me with both eyes by my position. I'll go here. When he looks at me with two eyes, he has depth perception. He knows how far away I am from him, and he likes me right here. From this position, I, I can ask him to walk straight forward by just walking across the balance point. And if I want to slow him down or stop him, all I have to do is walk up, draw away a little bit, ask him again to look at me with both eyes. I'll step here, here, here. Good, there he goes. As soon as he does, I step back and take some pressure off. 
This teaches him what I want. Now I want him to turn to his left. So I step right across here, pressure into that eye, put pressure on in front of the balance point, and ask him to move to his left. I want him to turn to the right. Now here I can step down behind him and ask him to look across this way. I might even have to put my hand on him. And I'll ask him to turn and look back at me over here. He's going ahead and switch across this way. That's fine. I'll draw him to me. I want him to go right back. Good. I'll step forward. I want him to stop. I walk up his eye. I pressure to his eye. Watch his front foot. I'll let it st there. Now I know I can take the pressure off and release it. So the bull tells me what I need to do, but I have to re keep repositioning myself in the proper place in the balance point and our flight zone to get these things to work. So when we're working with these guys to put them up a chute or somewhere, I'd like to try to keep them from, I'd try to pick out the bulls that want to fight and don't want to fight and kind of put them in separate. You can't always guess that, but a lot of times you can tell by the way they look. So I, I'll pick these two here. I'll try to take, take two and leave this guy because he seems to want to fight a little bit. Now once I put the pressure on here, I don't take it off. I think so many people when they're working with bulls, they take the pressure off. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on this bull. So a uh, low stress handling or effective stockmanship is not about no pressure. It's about the right kind of pressure. Now here I'll just, I'll just wait it out. I open my gate so if I need to I'll be safe. Now I didn't put any pressure on. I'll wait and I'll get myself safe. Now as I come around here this is dangerous business, so this is, but this is the real world. So right here, I have to get myself in a safe spot, and I'll let this bull load the other bull. Now there's no way I should get in there, so I'm just going to let him do the work for me. As he comes across here, I'll just wait it out. And he should send that bull right on up in the chute. So, with that situation, I actually let the fighting bulls work themselves into the chute. To find out more about low stress livestock handling and the Beef Quality Assurance Program, visit bqa.org or visit our website. That's cattlemanicattleman.org. We'll bring you interviews from our time at the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show in Tennessee when we return. Stay with us. New Holland equipment is built smart for the way you farm. And the T6 Series tractors from New Holland are the ideal mid-range tractors for cattlemen. Whether your job is loader work, operating hay equipment, moving round bales, or pulling a mixer wagon, the T6 provides power and performance with optimal comfort. Choose from three four-cylinder and three six-cylinder models with the right combination of transmission, hydraulic, and cab options to fit specific haying or row crop applications. And T6 engines are Tier 4. 4A emissions compliant, featuring New Holland's exclusive EcoBlue technology. Visit your New Holland dealer to learn more about the complete lineup of New Holland equipment, in addition to all of the benefits available to cattle producers. Hi there, I'm Joey. And I'm Rory, and welcome to our farm outside Nashville, Tennessee. When we go to work, whether it's on tour or here at home, we wear the West. That's right, wear it's that perfect snap shirt or that perfect pair of boots. When you wear Roper, you wear the West. Learn more about us, Joey and Rory, and about Roper Western Wear at eroper.com. Telling the truth and being real And feeding my family a home-cooked meal That's important to me That's important to me and Planting the garden and watching it
And joining us now is Tracy Bruner of Ramona, Kansas. He's the new vice president of NCBA. Tracy, welcome to the program. Thank you, Kevin. Happy to be here. Let's begin by telling folks just a little bit about your family-based operation back in Kansas. Well, I'm uh, part of the fourth generation of Bruners to farm and ranch at Ramona, Kansas. Cow Camp Ranch is our operation. It's a diversified farm and ranch and cattle feeding business. It's quite an honor uh, to be elected as NCBA Vice President. What are you most looking forward to as an officer and leader within this organization? Well, it certainly is, Kevin, and I'm, I'm very anxious to have the opportunity to work with cattlemen from throughout the United States on issues that are important to cattlemen. What are some specific program areas or activities that, that you're most passionate about? Two things that come to mind for me, Kevin, are a fix to the country of origin labeling problem. We are looking at retaliat retaliatory tariffs placed on our beef, exporting to, uh, to two of our biggest and most important trading partners, Canada and Mexico. Another item that is top of mind for many cattlemen today is enhancing our beef checkoff. Our beef checkoff has been at the same, uh, at the same rate for over 30 years and needs, needs to be enhanced. And Tracy, I know you're very passionate about people getting involved in cattle industry organizations and making this state and national partnership work. Why do you bring so much passion to that? Well, we invest time and energy and resources working together to ensure the, the not only health and vibrancy of our industry today, but also for future generations. Cattlemen, by and large, operate family enter enterprises and operations, family farm and farms and ranches, and we care about the next generation. And, and one last thing, as you look ahead at the future for the cattle industry and NCBA, what would you tell our viewers? Get involved, get involved. No one can tell the story the cattlemen, of, the cattlemen need to tell like cattlemen themselves. Very good. Well, we're looking forward to having you as an officer and getting you back on this program a number of more times. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Kevin. Why not join Tracy Bruner as a member of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association? Joining is easy. Just give us a call at 1-866-USA-BEEF or visit us online at beefusa.org. NCBA and the beef industry are lucky to have many great partners creating new and exciting beef products. Joining us now is Neville Craw, Corporate Executive Chef with Arby's. Neville, the Smokehouse Brisket Sandwich has recently been declared as the most successful product launch in Arby's history, I understand. I'm anxious to hear how that product was developed. Well, thank you, uh, Kevin, for having me, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here today. Um, this sandwich um, really started with a uh, dialogue that we have with our guests, which um, from a product development standpoint, we uh, do on a uh, daily basis, talking to them about various products that we uh, have considered, from a platform idea all the way down to a, a build. And what we found with this was the notion um, of layers of smoky flavor uh, being a catalyst um, to uh, precipitate trial. This wasn't about building just a barbecue sandwich um, or, a, um, uh, or a, a, just a regular sandwich. It was about developing layers of smoky flavor. And we actually worked backwards into brisket. We started with roast beef. We started with other things. We started with sauces and toppings and things like that. And what we found was the best way to begin delivering that was a, was a, uh, and a naturally smoked brisket. We looked at many briskets, and the one that, that uh, rose to the top was a brisket that was uh, over 13 hours smoked and, um, uh, with uh, hickory. And it's a wonderful product. So you get that 13 hours of layer of the smoke, and then we had to add another layer of smoke, and we put a big thick cut of smoked Gouda cheese on that, also naturally smoked Gouda cheese. Now on top of that, a sweet bun, so that you, you a sweet but not too sweet bun, so you have that carrier. But we had uh, barbecue sauce to add that tang and zip, but still not to be just a barbecue sandwich. 
We have mayonnaise on the sandwich to help drag that smoky flavor into your mouth, um, drag it across your palate, and then crispy onions to add some crunch and sweetness. So it, it, um, all of that delivers to our guests on a layers of smoky flavor. It's a delicious sandwich. I had my first one there uh, just after Thanksgiving, so uh, my compliments to you on that. Tell us why you chose to partner with the Beef Checkoff in releasing this sandwich. The uh, Beef Checkoff really helps us get exposure, uh, not only in the industry, but also gives exposure to us, to uh, guests, and then future guests. And you're a, a member of NCBA. Uh, why does Arby's choose to continue to be a member of NCBA? Um, a great partnership that really is, a, it helps drive insights for us. There's a, we, we work with them on, um, on concept ideation, on uh, thinking outside the box. And uh, we've, over the past year, we've uh, worked on uh, three or four new endeavors with them. Now, you mentioned new concept ideation. I'm interested to know a little bit more about your product innovation process. Well, at Arby's, with the new product development team, we have a notion that, uh, that good ideas can come from everywhere. And it's not just one guy like me sitting in a white coat, dreaming up the next sandwich thing. It's only going to be this way because I've got the best palate. We believe that um, in, a, in an open innovation uh, platform that we can engage multiple partners in many different walks of the industry and other industries to come up with good ideas. For example, the NCBA, um, uh, uh, vendor chefs, um, industry uh, chef thought leaders. Um, in our internally, we have a program called the Hey Chef Neville program, where we go out on, a, say, a quarterly basis and engage our uh, employees in the store with a contest of, let's say, uh, new beverages or uh, uh, new roast beef sandwich ideas, and. Who, who knows better than the people that are in the front lines talking to our consumers every day, talking to the guests, getting their ideas, and also they're playing with the food all the time. They're coming up with new concoctions just to make their lunch with. So um, we do that and then uh, we, we also reward them uh, f for their ideas up to about $1,500. So, and then at the end, of the year at our national convention, we um, we bring up one or two uh, employees and give them the uh, Hey Chef Neville Award of the Year. That's outstanding. Yeah, it, it's it's really fun. Uh, not just because I have my name attached to it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, also tell us, uh, you all have sold a lot of uh, roast beef over time. I'm interested to know what do you think the future holds for beef in Arby's. Uh, beef is a cornerstone product of our of our company, and it will continue to be so. As and we will engage uh, in looking at uh, the different versions of the roast beef that we have for new sandwiches, but also different cuts of beef, different ways of talking about it, and you name it. Um, but beef will always be part of uh, our beef. That's great news. Thank you for all you're doing to Thank drive you. demand for beef. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, sir. Thanks. To find out more about great industry partners like Arby's and see replays of all our shows, visit the website, cattlemanthecattleman.org. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Tough trailers built for tough country. Big Bend Trailers manufactures a different kind of trailer, one that's built to put up with the rough conditions found on the ranch. Rugged built using heavy gauge powder coated steel and a 2x4 rectangle tube frame. There's a 1 inch gap between the side and floor, so there's no place for water or manure to accumulate and rust. Big Bend Trailers are loaded with standard features, a lever action hitch, a three foot escape gate and a middle sorting gate, rhino lining along the front edges and a receiver hitch to tow another trailer, chute or other equipment. Tough and practical, that's Big Ben Trailers, designed and built by a working cattleman. You can rely on and trust Big Ben Trailers for their durability and convenient features. Reasonably priced for any rancher to afford. For a list of dealers and other design features, visit BigBenTrailers.com. Big Ben Trailers, built cattlemen tough. It's the official monthly publication of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. The National Cattlemen is produced exclusively for NCBA members and includes coverage of the news and events affecting our industry. 
From Capitol Hill to the far side of cattle country, the National Cattlemen provides information NCBA members need. Every issue includes market analysis, feature stories, and practical management tips. Start receiving your copy of The National Cattlemen. Call 866-USA-BEEF or go online to beefusa.org and join today. We can't all run for office or travel to Washington, D.C. to speak with each representative or senator, but you can have an impact on the future of the industry by contributing to the NCBA Political Action Committee. And joining us now with a closer look into the NCBA PAC is former president and Illinois rancher Steve Fogelsong, who now serves as chairman of the PAC. Steve, thanks for coming back to the show, and thank you for your continued leadership here. Well, thank you, Kevin. It's uh, an opportunity to continue uh, giving to the industry that's given us so much, so we, uh, we really enjoy that opportunity. Well, let's begin our discussion. Tell us about the goals of the NCBA PAC. Well, our PAC committee has got some pretty lofty goals, and I guess first off you need to know that what we're really about is trying to get really good uh, senators and representatives that understand our business, understand our way of life, and uh, the conservative values that we've got. We, we're trying to do everything we can to make sure they get elected and put into office. And uh, the goal, the monetary goal for PAC is $1.25 million for this election cycle, which is, you know, since the last election to the next election, which is coming up next fall. And uh, it's a lofty goal, but uh, we got really close to our goal last time, and uh, we fully intend to get there this, this go-around. Sometimes political donations seem like they just go into a black hole. How do these donations make a difference? These donations matter because everybody that runs for office has got bills to pay, you know, and they've got uh, election expenses. And we help, when, when you give those dollars, they have the opportunity then to get rid of that debt. And that's the thing that it really does for us is it gives us an opportunity to have access to those offices. And uh, we give to those folks that uh, are thinking about uh, helping us. And uh, we roll those dollars back to them and, and uh, it gives us a chance to get them in our office, get us into their office on a more regular basis. Can you tell us specifically about some of the successes that have been generated by this PAC money? Oh, absolutely. In the last election cycle, we won 85% of the races that we put money into. I think that's, that's better than most everything that we do. And as cattle feeders and, and cow-calf guys, that's better than we do most every day. But uh, we, we're really specific about what we attack. Uh, we put dollars directly into campaigns. We also take out ads in papers and on, on specific uh, you know, races that we need to work against. And, and we'll try to have that effect as well. And so how can folks donate? Well, we've got a couple of deals. I mean, you can direct donate, I and mean, you can just write a check to NCBA PAC. I think we can take up to $5,000 on a per individual basis, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take numbers that big or, or much smaller. Right. Uh, the other thing that we've got going on, we've, we've got a PAC auction that we have that's ongoing all the time, and uh, one of the most unique things that we've got as cattlemen, you know, we control a tremendous amount of property. We've got great access to, for hunting, fishing, camping, those sorts of things, brandings, you name it. If a guy's got something going on he thinks you know there's folks out there that might be interested in participating we're asking those folks to package that up and we'll put you on our website we're gonna and we're gonna talk about your ranch we're gonna talk about what you're doing if you've got a commercial operation going on you're gonna donate a hunt for instance we're gonna talk about that on that on that website as well and then put it out there and give folks an opportunity to bid on that yeah. and put those dollars into pack dollars so you can give cash or in kind we'll take either one but the, ultimately our goal you know is to uh, really get this pack uh, dollar goal pushed over the over the finish and get some really good people elected to congress absolutely well it's an important goal and thank you for your leadership i appreciate it to learn more about ncba pack and the current pack auction visit beefusa.org You'll find a wide variety of exciting travel and merchandise to bid on, and the funds go to support NCBA's work in Washington, D.C. Now, you must be a member to contribute to the NCBA PAC, so don't wait. Join today. Stay with us. We'll be right back. This isn't a job, it's a calling. Your hard work helps feed the world. Being linked to those who care for the land is our calling. For more than 175 years, John Deere has been a proud partner of the cattle business. 
That's why we bring you special NCBA member discounts, so you can get the right equipment. Strong, rugged, versatile, and ready to work hard. Talk to your John Deere dealer to learn more about your NCBA member discounts. John Deere, committed to the land, committed to your success. Hello, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Each week, we travel the country to bring you the latest cattle industry news and information. Check us out at cattlemantocattlemen.org or on Facebook and Twitter. Want to help elect officials who understand the needs of the cattle industry? Then visit beefusa.org and check out the NCBA Political Action Committee online auction page. There, NCBA members can view and bid on a wide variety of exciting travel and merchandise, and the funds go to support NCBA's work in Washington, D.C. You must be a member to contribute to NCBA PAC, so don't wait. Join today. We know who made that hitch. We know who cut the steel, who milled the ball, and who welded the seams. We know who tested, measured, and checked. We even know who thought the whole thing up. We're B&W, and we know your hitch. Because we don't make them halfway around the world. We make them all right here. B&W. Trusted. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. It was one of those cabin wrecks that just seemed to get worse and worse. Clay's brother said he'd never seen a pickup give birth. <laughs> well, Clay parked the rig, grabbed a small bucket with some OB chains, and approached a cow that was calving. Dad stayed in the pickup. Don't lose my good chains, hollered Dad. Well, the cow spotted him, rose, and trotted off. Clay went back to the pickup and chugged after her. As she made four passes from one end to the other of the small pasture, eluding our frustrated cowmen. Dad encouraged them. Try and rope her. Trap her in the corner. You're on the wrong side. Watch that hole. He's right-handed. You nincompoop, pull to the right. Watch that ditch. You're going too fast. You're going too slow. Throw it now. Shift to third. Watch that fence. They made a grand tour in Northeast Oklahoma before the cow finally stopped to catch her breath. Clay drove the truck right up behind her and then grabbed the OB chain and then leaning out the window, he dropped it over the extended hoof. And to ensure that he didn't lose the chain, he deftly looped the other end around his wrist. He hooked it with an OB handle for a better grip and Clay began to pull back. Brother tossed a lasso around her head for insurance and dad was giving directions Pull down! Get that down angle! The cow tried to get away, but the two brothers hung on. It didn't go smoothly. On the first jerk, she banged Clay's forehead on the door jamb. She stretched his nostrils from the bottom as she pulled his chest and shoulders through the pickup window. His head popped through, but then his belt buckle caught. Dad had a grip on Clay's right boot, and his own legs were braced against the gear shift and the roof. Clay's boot finally gave way and slid off his foot, catching briefly on the steering wheel and then on the side mirror. Clay slicked out of the truck in the horizontal position and immediately nosedived into the soggy ground. The last move changed the trajectory of the pull downward, thus achieving the right angle, so the calf's hips unlocked and he popped out, still chained to Clay. Don't lose them chains, hollered Dad. This is Baxter Black from out there. 
Thanks, Baxter, for another illustration of a good old-fashioned ranch wreck. <laughs> Don't go away. We'll have more right after this. Join your fellow cattlemen in sizzling hot San Antonio for the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It's the beef industry's biggest convention, and it's great for education, networking, and fun. Plus, you can check out the NCBA Trade Show for the latest technology. It's the 2015 Cattle Industry Annual Convention and NCBA Trade Show in sizzling hot San Antonio, Texas, February 4 through 7. Visit BeefUSA.org for more. I'm an NCBA member because NCBA, they look at the facts, they look at the history, and they look what's good for the industry. It's important to be NCBA members just because of what NCBA does. They keep us informed about a lot of things that are going on nationwide. The reason we're an NCBA member is we think that it's the best voice that the cattle people have. Join NCBA today. Head to BeefUSA.org or call 866-USA-BEEF. Welcome back. Now, if you haven't marked your calendar yet for February 2015 in Texas, now is your opportunity. We'll be in sizzling hot San Antonio for the Cattle Industry Convention and NCBA Trade Show. It will take place February 4th through the 7th. Find out more at the website beefusa.org. It promises to be a can't-miss event. Next week on NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, we'll have expert advice on providing sustained nutrition for your cows and calves. Plus, we'll head to Oklahoma to learn more about parasite control and the value of working with your veterinarian. And we'll tell you about the official truck of NCBA and what this announcement means for our members. All that and much more, including another visit with our friend Baxter Black. Well, that wraps up our time on this week's edition of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you again next week right here on RFD TV.